Uh, yes, excited to be um, you know, playing. These are these are exciting games to be in a, a quarterfinal, and our teams, um, you know, really enjoying themselves down here in Carolina. I think they've done a really good job of, um, you know, setting this up and and, and putting us all here. It, it's got a, a pretty cool feel to it, and um, you know, our team is 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 in a good place mentally, physically. We're doing well. We. Um, we, we, you know, today will be a light session as we do our final preparation for, for tomorrow's match. And we, we have a really good team. Seton Hall, <clears throat> I feel, is um, is balanced and is, is, is good as any team here. So we're going to have to we're have to do a lot of little things well um, to find success. But uh, that's what you expect at any, at any phase in the tournament. You're going you're to face really good teams. So uh, we're, we're just excited to get keep, keep going and uh, hopefully – you know, punch another ticket to a final four. Start with Tom. Uh, it's uh, kind of rare in an NCAA tournament environment where you get to play uh, teams from the same conference back to back. From a, a scouting and a game planning setup, how much has it helped to have watched Seton Hall play a Marquette or a lot of them play mute, the same uh, uh, mutual uh, opponents? Um, yeah, I think there's sometimes the, the matchup, um, you know, Marquette plays a little bit different than we do in certain phases, but it, it does help because then you can give a real clear um, example. So, it, you know, no different than we play other Big Ten teams and then we play um, common opponents. It just gives our players a framework to know, like, where players had success, who is it against, how they match up physically. So I do think that helps us um, in, our, in our preparation and maybe just mentally for our players. And, uh, but yeah, the, you know, all the teams, you know, it's been – you know, I don't, I don't really know where Seton Hall, <clears throat> you know, this progression through their season, I'm not quite sure where, where they felt their best form is, but certainly I felt watching their, their first half in particular, I thought they were really, really good against Virginia Tech. And Virginia Tech's an excellent team. So they're, they're from, from what I can tell, they're playing some of their best of the year at this time, and which, uh, again, presents a, a big challenge. Jeremy Price, then Jared Kelly. Yeah, it seems like uh, obviously you guys have gotten a bit of a crash course, I guess, in postseason play from Penn State to Brooklyn to Marquette. I guess, how pleased are you with how much and how fast this team has adapted and learned kind of in, in that process? From the, from the, same, from the standpoint of just being down here, Jeremy, or just the, the rhythm of the tournament? Yeah, just, just more the rhythm of the tournament and, you know, some guys that maybe haven't had this kind of postseason experience before. Yeah, I think we – I do feel that – I mean, you also have to understand, I mean, we, we just got through finals. I mean, we're talking about a lot of, um, you know, strain on these guys. And I know the other teams are certainly maybe in and out, maybe another week, or maybe they had it earlier. I know some teams are on quarters, so they might not have it for a while. But, I mean, we, we just had a real stressful week with uh, two big games – and a, a lot of stress um, academically. They all did really well, but you know, a couple of guys missed some meals, missed a practice. Um, they're up a little bit later than you certainly would would want them to, if it's just from a pure athletic standpoint. So the mental fatigue is is real, um, and I feel like we're through that, which is I think really good. And I think our young players feel better. Um, so on the soccer side, yes, the experience that that some of our younger guys or maybe juniors that, you know, haven't played a redshirt sophomore that haven't played in these big games. It, it does make a difference to have a couple um, under your belt and, and understand that, yes, I can continue to do what I did in the regular season in a similar fashion. And then uh, obviously leaning heavily on, on some of the guys that have played in these games with, um, you know, just Spencer's voice, obviously he can't help us in the field, but he's been great as a leader for the young guys. And uh, you know AJ and and uh, and Thomas Wars played in some in some big minutes. Joe obviously last year, and, and and so there's 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 definitely some guys that are helping others out with regards to adapting. Jared, hey Todd, uh, you kind of just answered the the my question, but uh, I was going to ask you about the leadership after last game. You talked about um, how how AJ was kind of rallying the troops at halftime, um, and, and obviously Spencer's there on the sideline too, um, but. This season, has, has it kind of felt like uh, it's kind of a leadership by approach type uh, situation or, or have there been a few that have really kind of taken their 
team by the reins. No, they, I mean, if, if it's driven by us the whole time, it, it, it's hard to, to, you know, get where you want to go. Um, I mean, I think there's times we had to give them a little bit of shot uh, in the rear, if you will, um, and get them going. And this, this team, um, you know, there, there's a, there's a lot of grit in there. Sometimes it just, we need to dig it out at times. And the, the players that, you know, certainly have, have done a great job with that, with AJ, um, being one of them and, and, uh, and, and Thomas War, you know, all of our seniors and captains quite honestly have done it, done it in different ways. I think some of the growth area, is, is really been, you know, Roman um, is really stepping up and, and taking a little bit bigger voice. And, and I think the guys, we feel the confidence uh, from, from his demeanor and just the way he's playing. And it's not just been the tournament all season. Um, and then Daniel Muni really stepped up and, and, and added elements to his game that I think that the team really has responded to. So, um, those are just a few examples of, 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 I think, the guys that have, uh, you know, stepped up and helped. And it, it's a committee. It's, it's not one voice. No, it's not one voice. AJ, you know, um, he's edgy. Um, and you got to know how to take AJ's, you know, he's, he's fiery. But I love it. Um, maybe a couple of times to pick and choose on when not to say something. But um, it's, uh, it's a good thing. So, uh, but no doubt we wouldn't be here with, without an, an AJ and his, his fiery demeanor. Jeremy? Yeah, I just wanted to kind of go back to Seton Hall for a minute. Um, obviously, that's a team that's a little outside the, the norm for you guys to play, I guess. Is there kind of what do you see in their style or is there something familiar about the way they go about things that, that maybe you've seen before somewhere or? Um, well, their, their team makeup is, is very international. They uh, nine of their 11, um, and, and there's a, a big, um, Swedish influence with the coach and he is, uh, he has quite a few Swedes and then there's a, a few English players, uh, a German, a Malta, um, Israeli, um, it's, it's a lot. And what you get with many of the international players, the one they've, often come up from a very competitive, um, call it a professional environment where they're maybe in the, in the youth piece of a really competitive pro environment. They're trying to make their way and maybe they didn't make it. There's a chip on their shoulder and, you know, obviously college is an avenue for them to keep their, their career alive. Um, the, you know, these guys are a little bit older. Typically they maybe, you know, either had a military um, stint in the, with the Israelis so it's, it's a mature team. They're big, and they have a lot of good belief. This has been an excellent year for them. Um, they've beaten some very good teams this year. So they're, they're balanced. They can, they can beat you in a lot of different ways. That's what I think is a, a testament to a really good team at this point. You know, you can't take one thing away from Seton Hall and say, okay, we got them figured out. Um, they're capable of doing a lot of good things, whether it's uh, restarts, combination – they're, they're, they have enough pace behind you. They can play through you. Um, we just have to be really good. Honestly, this is, this is, a, this will be the toughest match um, that we've seen, at least when it comes to the, the, the types of weapons they have coming at us. Tom? Todd, uh, when you get in a tournament setting like this, and it's clear, like we saw a couple nights ago with Clemson, and every game is tight and everything can kind of happen with the, with the turn of, of one play. Uh, you guys have been really good sort of late in games and obviously in penalty kick situations and all that. Have you been uh, pleased with sort of the, the confidence level and uh, that, that you guys have been playing with, especially late in games? I have, I mean, the second half of, of St. Francis, we, you know, there was a lot of elements that were not necessarily helping us and we were, were in a bit of a, um, we weren't in a, in, a, in a great phase of our play at that point. Um, we, we were able to kind of get through that, and I thought we, we grew into the overtime and then obviously the penalties. So I, I do feel um, this team, you know, I don't think we've seen our best year yet um, in the tournament, um, which is a good sign. I told them, I said, hey, you still haven't had, like, all of you had an A game maybe all at the same time. So that's, that's a good thing. Because you're going to have to win a couple of games where maybe a key players off a little bit. As I mentioned, Vic, 
you know, it wasn't his his top game last game, even though he made an unbelievable play to set up that first goal. Um, it still wasn't, you know, his his high end performance and, and a couple others the same. So I take that as a good thing that, that we're doing a lot of really good things, small details um, and our help, um, our ideas on where we where we're trying to get the ball has been very clear. Um, it's just the final execution. I think our our final pass, um, uh, whether it's the final cross decision, could be better. And you know we're, we're we're working on it, but we're not hammering it. Just kind of trust the game. We're, we're at this point, we're doing a lot less. We're doing a little bit of the opponent, not much in all of us right now. I'm really wanting them just to be, just to clear their mind. If, if they have the concepts down that we're trying to do, it's just going out and feeling confident. Um, being relaxed because there's a lot of pressure. They understand where they are and just going out and just trying to free their mind. That's, that's the goal right now.